Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. Uh, in this video we're in a different location right now, we're in my uni accommodation and uh, we are testing out the digital whiteboard. I uh, don't know whether it's going to work or not, it's the first video using this, but we're just going to see what happens. So without further ado, hope you enjoy the video. Okay then guys, so in this video we're taking a look at the intersections of straight lines and circles. And of course, just like always, we've got some notes on the side. So of course we have the notes, straight lines can intercept a circle once, twice or not at all. That should make sense logically if I actually try and draw something at the moment. Of course you have to bear with me, I'm new to all of this stuff. But if you were to have a circle, just you know, pretend that that's a circle, you could have a straight line that crosses it one time. So that straight line might look something like, well, if I can actually get it to line up, it might look something like that, okay? If you imagine that that does touch uh, in this area here, okay? That's one intersection. That line is tangent to the circle at a particular point. You could also get two intersections. So for example, you could have a straight line that goes through the circle like that. And then you have an intersection there and an intersection right there. That's two intersections. And there's one more instance where you have a straight line and it does not intersect the circle whatsoever. And that line could just be like that or, you know, like that or whatever. They just, it just doesn't cross the circle. And all of those are legit things that you can get. Uh, so that's just something to take note of. That should be common sense. Uh, another thing is that you can use the discriminant, uh, which I've written as delta, which is a triangle looking shape, um, is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And of course, we do have a video on that. And we'll talk about the discriminant potentially in the next video using this. Maybe this will be a two-parter or something like that. But sometimes we need to find the intersections of a straight line with a circle. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get a problem up. Okay then, guys. So we've got a problem um, that I've got right here. And it says find the coordinates of the points um, where the line y equals x plus 5 meets the circle x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 29. Okay, so how do we actually go about doing this? That's the point of the video, right? Well, we need to use our skills in simultaneous equations because this whole thing is just a big simultaneous equation. We are finding the intersections between two curves or, you know, you, you can count a straight line as, as a curve sort of thing. We're finding essentially the, the intersections of two functions on a graph. That is a simultaneous equation. We're finding when the x and y coordinates are the same. Um, on, on both of these curves, functions, whatever you'd like to call them. So typically, and this is why I said in the simultaneous equations videos, the best way to do this is through substitution. We are also going to use substitution right now because it is easier. So we have two equations. Let's actually write down our two equations to make sure it's very clear what we're talking about. So the first equation is going to be y plus five, or rather, y equals x plus 5. That's our first equation. We're going to label that equation number 1. Our second equation, of course, is just the other equation that's in this question, which is x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 29. We're going to label that one equation 2. They're just labels 1 and 2. They don't mean anything mathematical. We're just calling them different things. So now what we'd like to do is actually solve this thing. We Essentially, it's impossible to solve um, an equation like x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 29, for example, because you have two unknown variables. You need to eliminate one of these variables, get rid of it, um, and replace it with um, a situation, essentially, where we just have one unknown variable, either just x or just y. So we actually have what y is in terms of x in the first equation, in equation number one. We're being told y equals x plus 5, which means in this situation, in this question, we can say, yes, y is x plus 5 for this straight line. That's, they're the same thing. So we can replace y with x plus 5. They're the same thing, so we can just replace it with x plus 5. So I'm going to rewrite equation number 2. So we've got x squared plus. But instead of this y, I'm just going to write x plus 5. Because in equation 1, it's telling us, yeah, y is x plus 5. So x plus 5, not y, x plus 5. And I still need to take 2 away because the 2 was still there anyway. Whole thing still gets squared. That hasn't changed. And it's still equal to 29. All we've done is we've replaced the y with an x plus 5. That's the only thing we've done. 
but now we can actually solve this. So what we can do is just simplify this a little bit. So we get x plus 5, or x squared rather, plus, and then we have x plus 5 minus 2. That's just the same thing as x plus 3 squared, and that's still equal to 29. Okay, now we can expand these brackets out. So I'm going to write our x squared. That's the x squared that's just for that one there. Okay, so don't worry about that. And now I'm going to start expanding out the brackets. So we have another x squared, and that's plus 6x plus 9. Okay, and that was too fast. You can go back, you can expand those brackets out if you'd like to, but that is the expansion of the brackets. So the brackets expanding is this bit here. Okay, um, okay. Now we can just group the like terms together. So we have an x squared and another x squared. That's 2x squared. And we have a 6x. And then we have a plus 9 equals 29. What I shall do is I'm going to group the 9 and the 29 together. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take 29 away from both sides. So I'm going to get negative 20 equals 0. Because 9 minus 29 is minus 20. And 29 minus 29 is 0. Okay, now we have a situation where it's just a normal quadratic, but there is one more thing we can do. Because this thing's equal to zero, there's nothing stopping us from just dividing everything by two, because that will make it easier. So instead of 2x squared, we're going to have 1x squared. Instead of 6x, we're going to have 3x. And instead of minus 20, we're going to have minus 10. And instead of zero, we're going to have zero, because half of zero is zero. So just divide everything by two. That's all we've done there. This is a bit easier now. We don't need to worry about like twos in front of our uh, x squared and stuff. Like just a one x squared, that's nice. That's what I like to see. So now we can just factorize this. So just by eyeballing it, we are going to be looking at x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals 0. Uh, you can use quadratic formula for that. You can use whatever method you'd like. But that is the factorization. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then 5 uh, plus minus 2. Um, is minus 3, so that is definitely correct, which means that x has to be equal to either minus 5 or positive 2, just by substituting in, observing either x plus 5 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0, and those are our solutions. If any of that was complicated, uh, we do have some quadratic equation videos which uh, cover this topic more in detail. This is where everything comes in in A-level maths. We are looking at lots of topics combining, completing the square factorization, circles, uh, ex and simultaneous equations, etc, etc, etc. So uh, essentially, we now know, we have some information here. There are indeed two intersections between this line and this circle. One of them is at the x-coordinate minus 5, and the other one is at the x-coordinate 2 but we don't know the y-coordinates yet. That's not a problem though, because of course, we're looking at the intersection between the line and the circle, which means that the points at which they intersect are on both the line and the circle. So, oh, I've just moved to the 10. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> um, but what's actually interesting is we can substitute into either one of these equations. So we can substitute our values for x into this equation, y equals x plus five, or the other one, which is uh, x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 29. Now, word of advice, do not use the ones that have things getting squared and it's just it's more complicated. There's a chance that you're going to get solutions that aren't actually valid and then you have to go back and check them. It's a nightmare. Just use y equals x plus 5 because it's way easier. So guys, we're going to use the equation y equals x plus 5 because of course the intersection between the line and circle is on the straight line. It's also on the circle, but it's more importantly, it's on the straight line. So y equals x plus 5, that's definitely true. We know that. We already used it. And we're just going to replace the x with either minus 5 or 2. So our first y, let's call it y1, and let's actually call this x1 and x2 because these are linked coordinates. We need to have them connected. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, using x1, we're going to get y1. That's a that's like a connection. That's a, that's a pair of coordinates, x1, y1. Using x1, which is x equals minus 5, we just get y1 equals 0. Because x is minus 5, minus 5 plus 5, that's 0. And then y2, we get x equals 2. And then we have y equals 2, because that's what x is, plus 5. That gives us y2 equals 7. And that's actually everything, guys. So now... All we need to do is we just need to put these things together. So the answer to this problem would be one set of coordinates, 
would be minus 5, 0. And the other one is 2, 7. Just like that. That's literally all you have to do. And every problem is like this. You just need to go through. Sometimes you'll not get any solutions because they, the line won't intersect the circle. Sometimes you'll just get one answer. Um, and that will come from a quadratic equation which just has one solution. So it will be like you know, x plus or minus something squared. Um, it won't be like this double factorization of like an x plus 5 and an x minus 2. It might just be an x plus 5 squared or something like that. You'll just get one solution. That's absolutely fine. That just means the, uh, the line is tangent to the circle at some point. Only intersects it one time. And of course, sometimes you can just get uh, two coordinates. You can get 0, 1, or 2 intersections. In this question, we got 2. Make sure that uh, the x and y coordinates that you find are the ones that are connected to each other. For example, an invalid solution would be something like minus 5, 7, or 2, 0. Those are wrong. You need to use minus 5, 0, and 2, 7. Those are the correct answers. They are linked together because they are coordinates. Okay, So that is essentially all you have to do. In the next video, we will do this, but we will look at using the discriminant to find out the number of solutions, not the actual solutions, but the number of them, and prove that, for example, a line intersects a circle once, twice, or not at all. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.